Bauer here and today it's time to change oil on my 2003 Cadillac Seville. I did an earlier video on transmission fluid changes for this particular vehicle and I went into a lot of technical details in that video. This time it's just an oil change. It's pretty simple and straightforward so I'm just going to get on with it. But before I start I want to mention that this information applies to the K body 4.6 liter North Star vehicles. That includes the Cadillac Seville, Cadillac Deville, and the Eldorados as well. But uh, let's get started. North Stars have a reputation of burning oil. That's not necessarily a bad thing. All vehicles are going to burn just a little bit of oil, whether you notice it or not. It's just the nature of having a flame inside a combustion chamber that's coated in it. But uh, North Stars tend to burn a little bit more than others. And this is not something that I am very good at doing. You should uh, check your oil every once in a while. Make sure it's at the proper level. Uh, but uh, in this case, I'd recommend checking the oil right before you change it so that you know how much oil it's actually using. In this case, it's down by maybe about half a quart. Not a problem whatsoever. So after a full oil change, it burned maybe half a quart. That's pretty normal. But uh, now I know that for next time. Of course, to change the oil, you need to get underneath the vehicle somehow. Now you could use ramps and drive your vehicle up on ramps. That's a lot easier, but these vehicles have pretty low clearance and most ramps aren't going to fit underneath. This particular one, the front suspension has sagged just a little bit, and there's actually only about four and a half inches of clearance on the front of this vehicle. It already starts out pretty low from the factory and that makes it even lower. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to use a floor jack. I'm underneath the car here in the front, looking underneath, and you can see that I just put the jack in the center in the front member of the subframe. This is a pretty heavy vehicle, about 4,000 pounds, and 60% of that weight is on the front axle. So, um, there's a lot of weight up here, but that uh, front support member is strong enough in this vehicle to support it. And then, uh, before you get underneath, make sure that you support it with jack stands. One on each side. I just put them here because it's easy. I would not recommend using the factory recommended support points, which are back here behind the front wheel. Somewhere along here, uh, you can look in your manual for the exact point, but somewhere there. In most cases on vehicles that are more than, uh, this vehicle is about 10 years old, so on vehicles that are not new and live in a salty environment, these things will just fold up like wet cardboard. So just put it underneath the frame, that's much better. Now that I'm underneath my car with my catch pan underneath the oil pan here, the drain bolt is right in the back behind here next to the transmission pan and the oil filter is this uh, orange thing right here so this bolt back here happens to be 15 millimeters it's pretty common on GM vehicles just crack that thing open and uh, let the oil out now it's good to mention that when doing this to have the car warm there's multiple reasons for that one, the oil flows a lot better when it's warm, so this whole job will take you a lot less time. Two, the detergent, detergents in the oil dissolve, uh, dissolve the contaminants better when it's warm, so you get a better oil change. Uh, three, it's cold in my garage and I don't want my hands covered in cold oil. I don't really like changing it when it's super hot either, so I've been home for about an hour after work and uh, that lets the engine drain down well and you get a nice complete oil change. Now, this engine does take seven and a half quarts of oil, so make sure you have enough on hand before you start this. And seven and a half quarts takes a while to drain, so let's just let this finish. Now some people when they change their oil are going to wait for this to stop dripping completely before they put the plug back in, but uh, I don't have that kind of patience, and you know what? The oil chain shops don't either. If they let it drain even this well, you're really lucky. The point here isn't to drain all of the oil out. It's not to remove all of the contaminants, that's what your, fil your uh, filter is for. The point here is just to replace most of the oil, and that is good enough. So I'm just going to put the plug back in now. 
And when you retighten this, don't tighten it too much. You can uh, you can strip your uh, oil pan out, and then uh, then you'll have problems next time. So just tighten it that much, and then wipe it down. I don't happen to have a rag on me right now. And then move on to the filter. There's a lot of debate on the internet about oil filters and their quality. Most of it's a bunch of bunk, but I prefer these filters. They're pretty good. They're reasonably priced. I get this at uh, Advanced Auto Parts with their online coupons. You get 30% off. You can get this for $4.50 or so at the time of filming. And that's a pretty good price for a quality oil filter. So I just use these. You can use whatever you feel like using. Also, if I get this out of the box, one thing I like about these is that they come with this abrasive surface on it. So even when your hands are covered in oil, you can still get a very good grip on this, turn it loose, tighten it. Uh, no filter wrenches are necessary with this. You can get a lot of torque with your hands on this surface. So that's another thing I like about them. Also, when you look at an oil filter, make sure to check that these gaskets are not neoprene, that they are silicone. These are silicone gaskets, both the drain back valve and this one. That's a sign of a better quality oil filter. I'm not going to cut this open and show you what's inside. There's other videos out there on that, but uh, this is the filter that I like to use. And, when I, and what I would like to do at this point is just to take my new filter and put some oil on the gasket. That way it's ready to uh, remade up with the engine. And these do have anti-drain back valves, so they don't like to empty very much. And now that you have a little bit of oil film on your hopefully silicone gasket filter, you can just spin it right back on. Not a whole lot to it, really. And you don't need to tighten this up like your He-Man or anything. Just uh, put it on there snugly. It will not leak if the gasket is in good shape. There's no reason to crank it down. So that's good enough. Now, uh, now we're done underneath the car. So I'm just going to let the car back down and we'll finish on top. And now it's time to put fresh oil in the vehicle. But before we do that, let's talk about getting rid of the old oil. Please don't be one of those guys that just sticks this in a milk jug and throws it in the garbage can. The oil filters really do more harm to the environment than good when you recycle them. The oil, on the other hand, this is almost two gallons worth of energy that can be recycled and reused. This is a few hundred thousand BTUs of energy, and you should recycle it. Also, it, uh, it can leak in such in landfills, but... So I just take this, dump it in my recycle can when this gets full, take it to the auto store when I go there anyway for whatever reason and uh, they take it away for free so I'd recommend doing that. You can also get oil burning furnaces. Uh, there's videos on YouTube on how to use used oil like this for your own purposes. Go ahead and check those out but I just give it to the auto store. They take it for free and then I don't have to worry about it. Now it's time to add your new oil. These do take seven and a half quarts with filter change so make sure that you have enough oil on hand before you start most vehicles only take four or five quarts, so this one takes seven and a half. There's a reason that they designed it that way. That was for extended oil drains. More oil means that uh, the oil doesn't have to work as hard, essentially. But it stays cooler and can dissolve more contaminants, allowing you to do longer oil drain intervals. It was designed for standard oil rather than synthetic, but you can use either one. Uh, I am very well educated when it comes to oil. Um, I typically buy just what's cheapest, and there's reasons for that has to do with how I drive my vehicles and how I use them and whatnot. I'm not going to get into oil specifics, but this is what I'm going to use in this vehicle. And uh, yeah, basically you just dump in seven and a half quarts. This one happens to be full. This one happens to have about two and a half quarts in it. That equals seven and a half. So I'm going to put those in next. One thing for any of you who might be looking to buy a vehicle or just want to know generally how well it was maintained, a good way to do that is just to remove the cap 
and look down inside the oil filler. I don't know if I can show this on camera, but you can pretty well see how much sludge and whatnot is in the engine. Just by looking in there, there you can see one of the timing chains. And uh, this engine is well cared for. There's no oil film anywhere in here that you can see. Everything is nice and shiny. If there's any black deposits, carbon deposits, whatnot, that you can see in here, you know that your engine was severely neglected. But uh, this one's in good shape, and that's part of the reason why I bought this vehicle a year ago. Don't forget to put the cap back on. And now it's time to do whatever documentation that you do when you change your oil. In this vehicle, it's about as simple as it gets in terms of resetting the oil life indicator. You just select your oil life indicator and hit reset. And hit reset. And that's it. One more thing quick that I would recommend doing, because uh, the oil filter is not filled with oil, so to fill it up, start your vehicle and make sure that the oil light actually goes out. And it did. Because uh, if you don't start it now, when there's still an oil film on the engine, in the engine, uh, it will uh, start up dry next time for a few seconds. Not a big deal, but uh, I would recommend filling the oil filter with oil this way. In any case, thanks for watching. One more thing quick, when it's time to clean up, this stuff is awesome. They also make a Cresto brand that's a little bit uh, harsher and better, but this is less expensive, so I bought this. In any case, this is some of the best soap that you can buy, I'd recommend it. But uh, thanks for watching.